So in this lesson, we are going to solve some more examples on how to confirm the limits of functions of two variables. So let's solve example 3. Now using the precise definition of limits, we are going to prove that the limit of this function as x, y approaches 0, 0 is equal to 0. So let's solve this together. Now in the previous lesson, we got to understand that the limit of a function f of x, y as x, y approaches a, b is equal to l if for all epsilon greater than 0, there is a corresponding delta greater than 0 such that if 0 is less than the distance between the two points x, y and then a, b is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x, y minus l, which is the supposed limit, is less than epsilon. So basically, we are going to find delta greater than 0 for all epsilon greater than 0. And then we are going to prove that the absolute value of f of x, y minus l is less than epsilon. So using the definition for this question, we say that the limit of this function as x, y approaches 0, 0 is equal to 0 if for all epsilon greater than 0, there is a corresponding delta greater than 0 such that if 0 is less than the distance between x, y and then 0, 0. So that is given by x minus 0 all square. And then we can basically simplify this as x square. So x square and then plus y square is less than delta. Then we have the absolute value of f of x, y minus l is less than epsilon. Now f of x, y is the function we have here. So that is basically going to be the absolute value of y to the power 4 minus x to the power 4 divided by y to the power 2 minus x to the power 2 minus 0 is less than epsilon. So we first of all let epsilon greater than 0 and then we are going to find we are going to find delta greater than 0 and then we prove and then we prove that the absolute value of f of x y minus l is less than epsilon and mind you f of x y is this function okay so let's start with the solution process so first of all we are going to consider this part of this inequality so we say that the square root of x square plus y square is less than delta now we call this equation one and then focusing on this part of the inequality focusing on this part we want to derive a relationship that is going to link delta and then epsilon so we say that having the absolute value of f of x y minus l and that is equal to that is equal to this so that is equal to the absolute value of y to the power 4 minus x to the power 4 divided by y square minus x square now minus 0 we can just leave minus 0 out it's actually the same thing now let's try to simplify this so this is equal to now this is represented as difference of two squares that is the numerator so we can basically represent this as y to the power 2 square minus x to the power 2 square and then divided by y square minus x square we can further simplify this or expand the numerator to have y square minus x square times y square plus x square all divided by y square minus x square so we can cancel out these two and then we have this to be equal to the absolute value of y square plus x square which we can represent as absolute value of x square plus y square because addition is commutative so indirectly we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l is equal to 
Now the absolute value of x squared plus y squared is positive. So we can basically ignore the absolute sign so that we have x squared plus y squared. So indirectly we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l equals x squared plus y squared. Now looking at equation one, you realize that we have the square root of x squared plus y squared and for this equation we have x squared plus y squared. Now we need to derive a relationship that is going to link the two. So what do we do? The best thing we can do here is to square both sides of equation one so that we also have x squared plus y squared on the left hand side. So what we are going to do is we are going to square both sides of equation one. And thus we are going to have the square cancels the square root. So we have x square plus y square and that is less than delta square. Now let's call this equation two. Now considering this equation and then looking at equation two, you realize that here we have x square plus y square. For equation two, we also have x square plus y square. Therefore, if the left hand side is equal to x square plus y square, and then we have x square plus y square is less than delta square, then we can say that similarly, x square plus y square in this equation here is also less than delta square. Now notice that we are asked to prove that the absolute value of f of x, y minus l is less than epsilon. And then here we have the same thing at the left hand side. Therefore, if this is equal to that, now what this primarily means is that the extreme right, which is epsilon, is also equal to delta square. Therefore, we have a relationship between epsilon and then delta. So we say that delta square is equal to epsilon. And then because we want to find delta, what we are going to do is we are going to take the square root of both sides. And thus we have delta equals the square root of epsilon. So basically, we have found delta greater than zero for all epsilon greater than zero. Notice that if epsilon is greater than zero, which means that it's a positive number, then the square root of a positive number is still positive. So we've been able to find delta greater than zero. Now the next thing is we are going to prove that the absolute value of f of x, y minus l is indeed less than epsilon. So coming back to this inequality, we have the absolute value of f of x, y minus l is less than delta square. Now we have delta to be the square root of epsilon. So that is less than, less than the square root of epsilon. That is for delta. And then because we have square of it, we are going to square that. And that is going to be the square cancels the square root and then we have less than epsilon therefore we say that the absolute value of f of x y minus l is less than epsilon hence the proof now let's take the last example so with the last example we are going to use the precise definition of limits to prove that the limit of this function as x y approaches 0 0 is equal to 0 so the limit of this function as x y approaches 0 0 is equal to 0 if for all epsilon greater than 0 there is a corresponding delta also greater than 0 such that 0 is less than now the square root of now we have a b to be 0 0 so this is going to be square root of x square plus y square like we had in the previous example is less than delta then we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l is less than epsilon so we have f of x y to be this function which is 3 x square y divided by x square plus y square minus 0 is less than epsilon. 
now notice that first of all we are going to let epsilon greater than zero and then we are going to find delta greater than zero and then we are going to prove we are going to prove that f of x y minus l is less than epsilon notice that this is the same as that so let's start the whole solution process so we are going to select this inequality this part of this inequality we have the square root of x square plus y square is less than delta we call that equation one next we are going to focus on this or better still on that we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l and that is equal to we have this so the absolute value of 3x square y minus x square plus y square minus 0 we can basically leave that out and we move on so here we are going to take the absolute value of the numerator divided by absolute value of the denominator notice that the absolute value of 3 is still positive which is 3 absolute value of x square is still x square and then here we have the absolute value of y and that's we write the absolute value of y divided by absolute value of x square is positive so we have x square absolute value of y square is also positive so we simply have y square now at this point you are going to do one or two observations okay so for the first observation let's say first observation or better still let's say we have an observation sorry observation so for the first one we look at x square and then x square plus y square now we say that x square is less than or equal to x square plus y square now when y is equal to zero then you have x square equal to x square and then when y is any value apart from zero whether positive or negative because we have the score of it is going to be positive therefore if you have y to be any other value except zero then obviously the value you have on the right hand side is going to be bigger than the value you have on the left hand side so you say that x square is less than or equal to x square plus y square now if that is the case then observation number two we can say that then x square divided by x square plus y square is less than or equal to one again if y is equal to zero then x square divided by x square is equal to one and that will be equal to the right hand side if y is a value which is not equal to zero then adding up to x square it becomes bigger than the numerator hence the value you have here is going to be less than one so example let's say if you have three over three we know that is equal to one but the moment you have three over three plus one that value is less than one okay this is equal to 0 0.75 and we know that is less than one so this is actually what we mean by the second observation now if that is the case if that is the case here we have x square over x square plus y square and then here we have three times absolute value of y times x square over x square plus y square so what this primarily means is that if we should multiply the left hand side okay by three times the absolute value of y then that should be less than or equal to multiplying the right hand side also by three times the absolute value of y so we have that here that is on the left hand side that is what we have here so then that is going to be less than or equal to three times the absolute value of y so this will be less than or equal to three times the absolute value of y now another observation or better still a property of or the absolute value we say that the absolute value of y 
absolute value of y is equal to the square root of y square i think we did that in the previous lesson so we can say that this is equal to three times the square root of y square and then finally finally the last observation we say that we have the square root of y square now we want to i mean compare that to the square root of x square plus y square we need to draw a relationship okay we need to have a relation so we can say that the square root of y square will always be less than or equal to the square root of x square plus y square we want to make sure that we have at least something like this having these variables so if x is zero then it's equal to if x is any other non-zero number then we have the right hand side to be bigger than the left hand side so if that is the case here we have 3 being multiplied by the square root of y square so if you multiply 3 by what we have on the left hand side then that should be less than or equal to multiplying 3 by what we have on the right hand side so basically we say that 3 times the square root of y square like what we have here is less than or equal to so less than or equal to 3 times the square root of x square plus y square now again let's look at equation 1 equation 1 we have the square root of x square plus y square less than delta and then here we have 3 times the square root of x square plus y square therefore if we should multiply equation 1 by 3 or better still if we should multiply the left hand side of equation 1 by 3 then it means that multiplying the right hand side of equation 1 by 3 then we still have the left hand side less than the right hand side we have the left hand side less than the right hand side so that is simply going to be that is simply going to be we have this to be this time less than 3 times delta therefore therefore in actual sense we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l to be less than 3 times of delta notice that we are supposed to prove that the absolute value of f of x y minus l is less than epsilon and then we have absolute value of f of x y minus l less than 3 delta so you realize that the left hand side what we have in the left hand side is equal and then automatically what we are going to have on the right hand side is also going to be equal therefore we have a relationship for epsilon and then delta so we have we have epsilon to be equal to 3 times of delta and then because we want to find delta we divide through by 3 and then we have delta to be equal to epsilon divided by 3 so this is the value of delta greater than 0 for all epsilon greater than 0 now the next thing we are going to do is to prove that the absolute value of f of x y minus l is indeed less than epsilon now focusing on this inequality this inequality we have the absolute value of f of x y minus l is less than 3 times delta and then we have delta to be epsilon divided by 3 3 cancels out 3 and then we are left with the absolute value of f of x y minus l and that is less than epsilon hence hence the proof so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye